Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. You know, over the last couple of years, I've talked a lot about using JMRI and some other computer programs uh, for use with DCC. So today I want to go back and take a look at various computer interfaces for use with DCC applications. So let's get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. Now the most important step in setting up your computer interface is not something that I have shown here, and that is setting up the driver. And in just about all of these cases, the drivers uh, are available on the internet. Many of them uh, are available on your Windows 10 computer when you buy it. And uh, as soon as you plug in a new device, it will start searching for it and install that new device. And then every time you plug it in again, that driver will automatically start and you'll be ready to operate. So it's a fairly straightforward process. And let me point out, it is something that I have covered in other videos, and I'll put a link to uh, one of those above me here. And um, it's not all that difficult, as I said, as it used to be, because so many drivers are generic these days, and all of these various devices, uh, you can either use whatever comes with Windows, or you can go to the manufacturer's website for the individual device and download a, a, a driver that will work with the Windows operating system. So it's not as big a problem as it used to be. And you know I haven't heard that many complaints uh, in the last few years from people who are setting up a, uh, a new interface for the first time because it, it just has gotten to be fairly straightforward. No more difficult than setting up a new printer uh, for your computer. Okay, so let's take a look at the one, two, three, four, five, six or so uh, different computer interfaces that I have here. Now, there's two different main programs that you're going to be using with your computer for DCC. One of them is JMRI, and the other is the uh, Loc Sound Loc Programmer software. So I'm going to take a look at Loc Programmer first. So here is a, uh, um, a Loc Programmer current production, and this is what you use for uh, either programming a Loc Sound or uh, ESU decoder using their Loc Programmer software. But more importantly, when you want to upload a new sound package to a sound decoder, this is the only thing that you can use to do that. So it's very straightforward. You know, you just plug it in. There is a serial type interface right here, and it has a USB port on the other end. You just plug that in. Um, you install the software that uh, is downloadable from the uh, ESU website. And then when you plug this in, it should recognize it right off. Uh, it, it is that straightforward. It does have a little power socket right here, and they provide the, uh, the uh, power supply with it when you purchase this device. Now, on this side over here, it has a couple of LEDs that light up uh, when it's on and when it's transmitting data, you'll see it flickering. It also has a, uh, a little removable interface here, socket and plug combination, that you can connect wires to to connect to your programming track. Or I use, you know, for a lot of portable operations, there's a couple of metal contacts right here that I just hook up these clip leads to and then to the track, and that does a very good job. Now, one thing I'll tell you about the uh, the Loc Sound uh, Loc Programmer, it only works with Windows computers. It's not Apple compatible, so you have to be aware of that in advance. Um, and I have found this to be a very, very reliable uh, programmer option. It is optimized for your Loc Sound decoders, so it works very well both for programming them as well as uploading new sound packages. So that's it's a very straightforward option if you're going to invest in a lot of Loc Sound decoders and are going to be programming them on a regular basis and uploading new files, sound projects to them. So take a look at that one at their website. 
Now, let's take another look at a different one here. Um, what I have here, this is the USB interface card for the NCE power cab, and it works with some of their other units. Uh, most, uh, most of the big NCE command stations come with a serial interface built in. They've had that uh, ever since the very beginning for about 25, 30 years now. And um, because serial interfaces are not very common on computers now, they offer a serial to USB interface uh, for your computer uh, for use with that. Um, with this particular one though, it's very easy to set up. I've done a video on how to set this up and get it operating with your NCE power cab. And um, I've never had any real problems with it, but um, there have been changes over the years. And the most recent versions of this uh, particular board, uh, it's very easy and straightforward to set up. You just um, follow the instructions and I've never had any problems with it. But I will put a link uh, to this, uh, to the video that I've done before on this uh, particular device. And read the comments because there was some discussion uh, back in that other video on how to set this up and the various uh, jumper settings right here that are required. And um, it's, 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 it's much easier now. So go back, take a look at that. And if I can find Jim Scorsese's uh, specific instructions on this, I will include them in the description for this video. But basically then, you just plug it into a USB interface on one end, and then the USB uh, cable plugs into your computer USB port, and it should come up and run without any problem. But again, you can download drivers specific to it from the NCE website if that becomes a problem. On the other end, we have the typical uh, cord. This is a, a four-pin cord that is, you know, used on throttles with NCE, and this just plugs into uh, one of your throttle ports, and that makes it compatible. And I've shown, like I said, how to use this with JMRI and a power cab system, and I will include a link to that video or a list of all of the videos that I'm going to talk about in the description to this one. So. Take a look at, uh, at those videos if you are interested in using your power cab with JMRI. Now this is just your standard USB uh, cable, interface cable. It works with uh, printers, it works with devices like I'm showing you here. So it's not something that is a big mystery. Another uh, very popular interface is the Railroad or rr circuits Local buffer USB interface. You just plug one in uh, here into your computer using your USB cable, and then the other end goes into a loco net. So these are Digitrex uh, type loco net devices, and once it's plugged in, it takes power from either the USB end or the uh, loco net end. I really don't remember, and it basically then uh, translates the information from your local net system into your computer. And it can only be used for that purpose. So I call it a dumb interface uh, because it can't be used as a standalone programmer unlike the, uh, unlike the uh, ESU device that I just showed you. And in that respect, the um, NCE device is a dumb uh, interface as well because it cannot be used uh, for programming by itself. It, the, of course, the uh, NCE power cab can be used for programming, and this can interface with JMRI to allow you to use JMRI with your power cab to do programming. So this is a fairly uh, robust device. It's been around for a number of years in various versions, and if you're a, 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 a Digitrex user, it, uh, it's a very popular option for doing uh, programming with JMRI. Let's take a look at another one here that I really like. This is a Sprog 3. There's also the Sprog 2 and various other versions available. And this particular uh, device, uh, it can act as a command station uh, or 
just uh, as a booster basically and um, you can use it for programming. So it's a very simple interface option. You just plug it in again with like all of these to your USB cable and into JMRI and then you can hook it up at this end to your track connections and have a programming track for example and then you can use this as a standalone programmer. So if you're going to be going uh, to a, a train show somewhere uh, or to a uh, club meeting or anything like that and you want to do some programming, all you have to do is have your laptop with JMRI. You can plug the cable into your computer, hook this up along with uh, the power supply which connects right here and you can do programming using JMRI right there with the Sprog 3. You can also use this as a command station to operate a small railroad. So it is very versatile. You could use this with some of the um, Tam Valley Depot uh, um, inexpensive boosters to operate a model, um, to provide more power to a model railroad than this device is able to provide on its own. So it offers both the capability to have a programmer that you can take anywhere with you with your computer instead of hauling around a command station like this and you can do your programming that way or you could use this on a small modular layout or even a small home layout if you don't have a lot of locomotives to operate. So it is a very robust device. You know this is one of the best programmers that I have found in general. It does a very very good job with programming a wide range of decoders. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of Digitrax options. Now for a number of years, Digitrax has been offering various ways to interface with computers. And it's become a very popular option for people who use JMRI a lot. Now one option was the PR3 for many years and the great thing about the PR3 is you know it has a jack on the back for power uh, to provide power for it. It's got local net ports so you can use it as a computer interface for various uh, of the older command stations uh, that Digitrux has produced over the years and use it with JMRI. Uh, you just simply plug in your cable here and plug the other end into your computer and add power and you're ready to go. Also right here you can take and add a couple of jumper cables and I'll show you how I do that with the PR4 in a minute and then that can be connected to a programming track and you can do standalone programming with just the PR3. Now more recently Digitrax came out with an updated version called the PR4 and you can see it is significantly smaller and yet a much better device. And in the same way it has its port here on the back where you just plug it in to the computer. You can plug it into Loconet and then it has this uh, screw terminal here where you can connect a couple of clip leads and attach these to a settle, uh, to a uh, um, an isolated track and use it just for programming using Decoder Pro uh, in the Gem repackage. So that's a real nice little device. If you want to take it somewhere, all you have to do is hook it up to your computer and you're ready to go as far as programming uh, locomotives. Now, finally, let's take a look at this guy here. For the last couple of years, Digitrex has been actively releasing new versions of their command stations and boosters and throttles and their PR3s and 4s. So what we have here is the DCS240, which is their top of the line command station. It has lots of memory, but the thing I want to point out that they have been adding to all of their new command stations are USB ports. So in this case, the command station has the interface built in. So you just plug it in there, plug that into your computer, and then you can use the command station with JMRI to an interface with your Loconet system. Now, there's a lot of ways that this can be very useful because you can use that to program decoders on your programming track, 
programming on the main, you can upgrade your various uh, firmware in your command station, your boosters, and your throttles and uh, other devices that are upgradable in that way. So it makes it very easy and very quick. And like I said, the DCS-240, the DCS-210, the Zephyr, I believe, all now come with a USB interface built into them. So it makes it cheaper and easier than ever to go ahead and start using a program like JMRI Decoder Pro to do your programming. So all you'd have to do is plug that in, provide your power. I removed my gang strip here with all the wiring uh, to take it out of the, uh, the box I keep it in. But it's got all of the interface connections here for input power, track power, programming power, everything right here gets just plugged right into a screw terminal strip. And if you want to use 5 amps, you can put 5 amps in here. You can put 8 amps directly into the power connections on the, on the uh, screw terminal strip. So this is a very, very robust system. I have been very happy with this. I've been using it constantly almost for two years now, and I've never had any problems with it. Well, that's a wrap for today's look at various computer interfaces for use with DCC. So, I hope you guys have a good weekend, and we'll see you here next week with some more videos from the DCC Guy. Bye now.